do people already have a lower amount of gadolinium in their system? A, a human thing? being normally does not have gadolinium in At his all. body. If there's uh, gadolinium in your body, you've gotten contrast. A radiologist put it there. Now, there are rare exceptions. Back in the old days, people were making CDs. In the process of making CDs, some gadolinium exposure was there. But the vast majority of us don't have that. An interesting tangent that I've been teaching about since 2014 is that um, we now find gadolinium in our, in our drinking water. Remember I told you it gets excreted by humans in urine. And so it goes from into the sewage and it goes to a sewage treatment plant sewage treatment plant then goes through and recycles gets rid of the solid waste gets rid of things that we don't want in humans filters those out and then returns the purified water back into the drinking system um, studies have found that um, as much as 90 90 percent of the gadolinium that is urinated out is returned is not filtered and is returned into the drinking system. So literally dozens of articles literally have appeared over the past decade showing that in all the major reservoirs of the world, and I do mean of the world, uh, Australia, England, throughout Europe, throughout the United States, San Francisco Bay, Pittsburgh, um, every major reservoir has gadolinium in the drinking water that the levels are rising, and the rate at which the levels are rising is increasing. Uh, interestingly, now they're also finding it in the plants, in the reservoirs, and they're now finding it in the animal kingdom of the reservoir, insects. So it's now possibly beginning to enter our food supply as well. Now the amount is very, very small, but it is a clear, extremely noticeable spike in of all the, they, constantly check all the rare earth metals and gadolinium is a very noticeable spike that has occurred in humanity in, in the last few um, decades and it's directly and specifically traceable to medically administered in fact some of the studies have looked at urban versus rural and the rural streams don't show it in the water it's only in the waters of the major medical centers of the world in the cities and have major medical centers. They've even gone so far in a study that was published about the San Francisco Bay Area. They actually show where they sampled and those that are closer to the hospital systems have the highest values and they don't. In fact, to make it really interesting is that they've sampled them by time of day and time of week. And you see the levels go down on the Saturdays and Sundays and go up on Mondays, usually in the afternoon. Every day you see that the afternoons, a person gets injected starting in the morning. You wait two, three hours. They start to go to the bathroom and you see the, the numbers go up in the afternoon. They go down again late evenings as you would expect the typical patient flow. So we know that these are medically administered gadolinium levels. That having been said, it's not enough to have reached alarm. It's just that people are aware that this is happening. But the answer to your question is that that notwithstanding, normally humans have no exposure to gadolinium other than medically administered. Even this is medically administered initially and now is finding its, finding its way back into drinking water. So if we find gadolinium in the biopsy of a human, a radiologist put it there. That's interesting. So someone who is, has, a, let's say, renal issues, right, and they wouldn't normally get IV contrast, but they drink. It's just not enough, right? It's if impossible. they're drinking and they're not getting IV contrast, the gadolinium that we measure in their bodies is what you and I would call background. Uh, not sufficient for us to be concerned about or measure or rise. No, not at all. Okay. We'd consider that within normal limits, and it's near the level of quantification, near the smallest level that we can detect. Okay. I'm curious what the half-life is. Of? Gadolinium? Like, um, of these contrast agents. Well, they're not radioactive, so I'm sure you don't refer to a radioactive half-life, but you mean biologic half-life. Biological, yeah. So that's the whole point. Normally, the medically administered gadolinium agents that are used for neuroradiologic application, those have half-lives of 90 to 120 minutes. What that means is that I'm going to inject into that patient um, 14 cc's, mm -hmm. and half of that I expect to be in the bladder in the urine, seven cc's approximately of that 14 in about an hour and a half two hours another two hours later three and a half cc's another two hours later approximately one and three quarter cc's addition do you understand so it, that's the biologic half-life but what happens is if that's a uni compartment uh, model that's where there's only administered to the extracellular fluid clear it from the extracellular fluid 
But now they're discussing, as we've said, a second compartment. What if there's not a pure extracellular fluid biodistribution? What if some of it is pulled off and sent into the bone? So that half-life is a separate small, 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 small part, and that one may be there for months and years. So there's two different components and two different half-lives. Right.